guys, this is Romy here. Welcome back to Changeling right here. Shit's gonna go down. Smith is gonna go on missing. I don't know how. <laughs> I shut my phone in my pocket and started downstairs. I was halfway down the hall when I heard something that sounded suspiciously like the back door opening. No. No, 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 no. There was no way this was happening right after Ali warned me. That would be way too stupid. I ran down the hall and stairs to an empty kitchen and back door swinging right open. Spencer! I flew outside, nearly tumbling off the back porch. I saw him for a split second before he stepped into the fairy ring and was gone. Fuck. Are you shitting me? I'm sorry if I'm out of breath. That's <laughs> why I went downstairs to grab Arya. Um, call for help. No. No, no, no. They had him again. I fumbled to get my phone out of my pocket. Have, have to call Allie? You wouldn't. Anyone. Oh, my favorite boy. Ichigo? He was in the middle of clambering over the fence. Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> you were climbing over my fence? Clambering over the fence into my yard. I assume you heard the commotion. I heard shouting. What are you doing outside? I blubbered incoherently as I dropped my phone and ran to him. He took Spencer. He went to the fairy ring. What? That, that idiot. Why are either of you even outside? Fairy's controlling him, I think. I don't know. I just saw him a split second before he went in. You and shoved me back toward the house. Get inside. Call Allie. It took off toward the ring. No way! Wait, you and you're gonna be trapped in there! I try to grab <laughs> No! No! This is like Romeo and Juliet! No! <laughs> no! I try to grab his arm, but he shook me off and darted straight into the lopsided ring of mushrooms. Like Spencer, he was gone as well. No! I staggered toward the, ring, the, toward the ring myself and over the edge. I really wasn't thinking clearly, but I was determined to go after them. I couldn't lose either of them. Not Spencer, not again. But there was no flash of light, no sudden teleportation, nothing. I stood in the center of the ring, but wild and afraid. They, they locked me out. No, what the fuck? I dropped to my knees and clawed at the ground, ripping up the grass, the dirt, tearing my nails and mushroom caps. Why am I doing that? What if they're trying to come back? I just ruined the circle. There was nothing. No... I saw them defeat, clutching huge handfuls of grasses that bowed over in the cold, begging them to give my brother back. I don't know how long I was there before I felt something warm and soft on my head. Huh? <gasps> the brownie! Mm. What are you doing outside? <laughs> I looked up stars to see a very familiar little figure in front of me. and tipped its head to the side and smiled slightly as I sat up, scrubbing my face with dirty hands. The brownie had my phone with it and shoved it my way, chatting rings softly. I swallowed hard, my throat tight and aching. Right, okay, right. Well, imagine if you out of the brownie in the very beginning. Oh, I was gonna let you cry. Thank God the brownie came and saved the day. I had to call for help. I got shakily to my feet and looked around. Looking around, there were supposed to be other people watching the house, but Ewan was the only one that came. Come to think of it, it was eerily quiet, not normal quiet. Something was definitely wrong. I scrubbed my hands clean on my chains and shakily dialed Allie's number. She picked up immediately. Michiko? <laughs> What? Help! They got Spencer and Ewan! And something is wrong around the house. Too dark, too quiet. We're on the way. How did Danny not hear anything? Something is wrong. Get in your room and wait there. Okay? I ran upstairs, still biting back tears as I huddled my bat bed back. On my bed, feeling useless and afraid as I waited for help to come. While well, I made it to my house in record time, I figured out immediately why it was so dark and weird outside. Apparently, the Unseelies outsmarted us a bit. They put up a wide glamour spell around the entire freaking house. So that's why it was so quiet these past two nights. They were busy. They can see what was going on, making it easier for them to nab Spencer without anyone noticing. We were assuming you had managed to go to see through it when you heard me yelling. I was glad Allie hadn't come alone. I felt like the more people we had at this point, the more likely we were able to get we were going to be able to get Spencer and Ewan back. It didn't take long to update everyone. We just needed to figure out what to do next. How do we get them back? I suspect they're not going to just let us in at this point. You think? I mean, they locked me out of that damn fairy ring already. We should have gotten rid of it as soon as Allie knew something weird about it. At this point, I might actually have to try to tear down that hill with my bare hands. If that's what it took to get them back, I didn't even care. There are a few fairy gates in the area this time of year. The agency should have a record of them, but we don't have much assurance the Fae haven't closed those as well. That said, there is a straight gate that opens in the area every year. The location is never the same, and it's possible that one might be outside the control of the unseen court. We spend a lot of time looking for it every year, so we can make sure we keep any and all mortals away from it. But have you found it this year? A stray gate. Hmm. Is it under the river? The bridge? 
Something dawned on me suddenly. The bridge. What if that's why I'd been trying to sneak out down there? Why had I been so drawn to it? Wait, I might know where it is. Chapter 10. Beneath the fairy hill. Gotta save my... My fave boy and my brother. Yeah, there's definitely a gate under there. It's probably been opening off and on for the last couple of weeks. I imagine that's why I keep feeling drawn to this spot. Most likely. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go in. Danny grabbed my arm, pulling me back before I could head down there. And Chico, wait. This is like so full circle because Danny was the first guy I ever went for. And he's now the guy that is currently here with me. Chico, wait. Let go. We don't have time to wait. Chico, we can't just go running in there without, without some kind of plan. Oh, yes, we can. Not to be super blunt here, but the last time you did that, you ended up tangled in a changeling contract. And I'll get myself tangled in a hundred more if it means getting Spencer back. Well, that's kind of defeating the purpose. I want a plan that gets everyone back safely. I saved my brother once before and I can do it again. I'll do it again, no matter what what that, ha that, that, what that means. I stopped and looked out a long, slow breath before I turned back to Allie. But I don't have any intentions of stumbling into another annoying contract. I'm pissed, but I'm going to be smarter about it this time. That said, I'm not sure what other help we can get than what we have here. And I want to get them back before it's too late. It's pretty down here. It's like real pretty down here. I have climbed and half slid down the embankment toward the opening under the bridge. It was strange, but when I looked underneath, it felt like the air was colder. I could see the other side, but it just felt off. I thought I could hear whispering voices rustling out toward us. If a dragon or troll shows up from the other side of this thing, Spencer and you are on their own. <laughs> but nothing emerged. Instead, I took a deep breath and without looking back, stepped forward and tumbled into the darkness. <gasps> Is this my first time going down here in the fairy world? They didn't even stop me. They just let me go. I imagine stepping through the gate was similar to what it must have felt for Alice to topple down that rabbit hole. I was spiraling down toward, through a tw the downward through a tunnel, except it felt like my feet went over my head so many times. I couldn't tell what was up or down anymore. <laughs> but there were no caterpillars. Instead, after what felt like a weirdly long time, I fell face first in a pile of wet, rotten leaves, just as if I'd tripped or something. Ew. I laid stunned for a split second before I jumped up and looked around. There was no one else nearby, but I appeared to be in a forest. A forest of soft glowing lights that felt uncomfortably familiar. It was strange because there was no sky overhead. If I looked up, I was so, I was just yawning back. Black. It was just yawning black, sorry, not I was. I was like, what? How am I doing that? There was a slight echo, the sound of trickling water. Through the trees, though, through, it through the trees... Though, it almost felt like there were stone walls lingering back there. As if I was really in a giant cavern, there were faint singing voices as well. The eerie, haunting sort. Not the sort that made you feel safe and comfortable. Definitely had an otherworldly feel. That made me want to simultaneously go home. And pinch myself to make sure I wasn't dreaming. Is this where I insert a clever quip about Kansas? There was a soft thump behind me and I whirled around. Owie! And Allie was... <laughs> Oh, was picking herself up out of the leaves, pulling them from her hair one by one. I could have done without that fall. It wasn't that bad. Maybe for you. I didn't know she was coming in after me. I thought I was going by myself. I held out a hand to help her stand. She looked around apprehensively. I wasn't really expecting this. Me either, but I guess I should have been. Familiar? Annoyingly so. Oh, Drayson! I just saw a floof of pink sticking out, uh, sticking up out of the leaves, and in spite of the situation, I had to fight back a laugh. I crouched down and helped Drayson sit up, picking the leaves out of his hair. You okay? Yeah, that was strange. Is Danny coming with us too? He looked around with great interest. There wasn't a trace of fear on his face, just frank curiosity as he studied the trees and lights. It's pretty. I grant him that, but that didn't mean I didn't want to go home. Shelley wasn't far behind either, and it didn't take us long to get her up and situated as well. Danny landed with a surprising amount of grace compared to the rest of us. I was a little jealous considering it was cats that were supposed to be able to land on their feet, not dogs or well werewolves. You probably wouldn't be thrilled at being called a dog. I let a long, shaky breath. I guess it's time to go. I didn't even know how we were going to get out of this place once we got Spencer and Ewan back. That was a bridge we'd had to cross when we got to it. But I was going to have to stay on my toes if I wanted to outsmart these guys this time around. Because with fairies, I, feel, I felt like it always came down to outsmarting them rather than overpowering them. 
We walked quietly for some time, and honestly, I had no idea where we were going. Our footsteps were strangely echoey, heightening the feeling we were actually in a massive cave, despite the trees around us. There was a really, really strong feeling of being watched, though. I couldn't see anyone or anything nearby. The silence was tense and unnerving. Well, this is basically like the worst haunted house ever. I mean, there's not even a single, there's not even one super fake skeleton, not to mention the decided lack of cobwebs. Ali shot me a slightly amused look. Yeah, I was just thinking the ambiance is pretty good, but the decorator was really sleeping on the job. Spent on the budget on those stupid lights. No kidding. <laughs> Reminds me of Mr. McClanahan's haunted house last year. Ali just laughed quietly. Oh man, I forgot about that. What happened? I felt like we were talking, we we're just talking to ignore the reality of the situation, but it was better than walking in silence. Oh, it was so bad. He kind of painted a bunch of weird posters and stuff, and he just had a couple of speakers up playing spooky sound effects. A complete F for effort. The only scary thing about it was the headache he had by the end, and how long it took through, t took to get through. I laughed quietly. Given what you deal with on a daily basis, I'm surprised you even bother to go. They can be fun if you don't take them seriously, if there's at least some thought put into them. She stopped suddenly, frowning, she squinted up ahead. What is that? Looks like the path ahead is closing. Can we run for it? Try to make it through. No, it's too late. We just watched in dismay as shadows streaked across the path, leaving a wall to block the way. What the hell is that? Oh, okay, I was like, the end of the episode! No, it's not. Looks like a barrier. Those slimy little cheaters I looked around helplessly. We're completely walled in. What now? Who the fuck is that? Who are you? Cause you're real cute. You're cute. <laughs> Your way seems to be blocked. What a pity! I took a stumbling step back as a strange figure popped. Oh, was not popped. Stepped from the shadows into the faint light. A fairy, surely. But the face, the build. Danny? Is it Danny? How? <laughs> I mean, it wasn't, of course, but there was a striking resemblance for sure. I was immediately uneasy. With fairy glamour, it wouldn't have been hard to imitate anyone. I didn't know if they picked a good friend just to throw us off or what. Or maybe it was a jab at me because I kicked the fake me out of the house and all the way back to fairy. Either way, I didn't like it. The fairy just smiled. If you want to go on, you must pass me first. <laughs> Falls in love with doppelganger nanny. Okay. I shot Ali a word look. Are we supposed to beat him up or something? Why is everything gladiator battles with you? Not everything is a gladiator battle. Besides, I wasn't up for a gladiator battle with even a fake Danny. I have a really great idea. Why don't you just let us pass? Uh-uh, not so fast. I'm not going to let you go for free. This isn't how things work here. I glared at the doppelganger. Then what do you want? Only something very simple. An easy task that won't take long. Task. I shivered. There was something about the doppelganger's smile that suggested this wasn't going to be easy at all. Ready? Excellent! It crossed its arms. I nourished those that would build the city that found it much into which all roads lead. What am I? What? Oh, is that your answer? No! No, it's not! A riddle. So they're going to make us answer a freaking riddle before we were allowed to pass. That was definitely a very that was definitely very fate like but frustrating. Where's actual Danny? So he can stand right here. So we can just see them both. I glanced back at the others. We didn't have time for this, but I didn't think we had a choice but to answer. Nourish those that would build a city that founded much. Hmm. Hold up. Okay, thank y'all, Danny. So we can like compare you two. Uh there's slight differences. Danny stepped forward from the back of the group, crossing his arms as he glared at his creepy fade doppelganger. It was kind of eerie watching them stare down each other, stare each other down. You barely look like me, you know. The fake Danny just lifted a, <laughs> lifted an eyebrow and didn't respond. Whatever. I don't know what you're planning, but I know the answer to your riddle. He glanced my way with a slight smile. If you trust me to answer, no, I think I need to solve it. In the end, this is my fight, and I can't let others get involved more than they already have. Are you sure? I think this is the right thing to do. Now it's for that riddle. What the fuck? Danny had the answer, I'm gonna be like, nah. The <laughs> fairy smiled and tipped its head to the side in a decidedly undanny way despite how much it looked like him. I hated that look on its stupid face. I'll even make it easier for you. Here are the possible answers. Can you choose the right one? What the fuck? <laughs> Those are the answers? Shit. I'm guessing it's Wolf since Danny knew? Capital 
Ka Capitolin Wolf, someone had definitely never told the Bay that multiple choice questions were always easier. As soon as he gave me the options, I knew exactly which one was correct. I was an expert in mythology despite all my reading, but would study the story of Romulus and Remus and their mother, well, the wolfy one, as well as the famous sculpture named after her. The answer is Capitolin Wolf, right? The wolf mother of Romulus and Remus. The fairy's face changed rapidly from sparking to fear. He glared at me, lip curling to an unpleasant snarl. That, that, he definitely hadn't been expecting me to get it right. I only assumed that it was the wolf one because Danny knew the answer because Danny's a werewolf. Looks like I got it right. Now keep your word and let us pass. Very well, I'll allow you to pass as you say, but you have to stay with me. What? You pointed to Danny as he spoke. What? No, that's not fair. You said we would get. <laughs> you said we'd get to pass if we answered. That is not what I said. I said you couldn't pass for free, and you can't. That one can stay, or you all can stay. I'll do it. I'll stay here for now. Danny, no. It's done then. No, we can't leave you here. Michiko's right. We. Danny grabbed my shoulders as his creepy clone clapped its hands. The shadow wall began to melt. Michiko, I'll be fine. I can look after myself. Go and get Spencer and you and back. Go. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> am I slowly gonna lose each person as we're going through these walls? What the hell is happening here? I grabbed his arm as the fairy tried to pull me away. No! Don't be so dramatic. If you achieve your goal, you'll all be released, you know. Oh? Huh? Are you sure? <laughs> he shrugged as if it should be obvious, but he didn't exactly look trustworthy. How could I believe something like that anyway? They were liars, kidnappers. We don't have much use for a werewolf down here anyway. That was surprisingly pragmatic for a fairy, but still. Michiko, just hurry up and get the others back. I didn't want to leave him. Damn it. Alright, am I going to see a doppelganger of everybody here? I shot one last look his way before he squeezed my eyes shut. Hurried down the tunnel deeper beneath the hill. The others followed more slowly, but they finally caught up and were reluctantly left behind. Left Danny behind. I don't remember it being this hard last time. Then again, my memories of last time were a little, or still a bit vague. And I'd been alone. I don't think I had to answer riddles. And in any case, we continue on silently this time. Maybe the seriousness was finally hitting us. Or maybe the creep factor was finally getting to us. Either way, we just walked in anxious silence, jumping at any movement or flux of the st shadows. An unexplainable breeze rustled the leaves above us, letting them rain down on our heads. Wait, that wasn't a breeze. Something was running through the trees above us, bouncing loose the leaves. There was a playful giggle, one of the first outward signs of those watchful eyes that could feel all around us. So annoying. I glared up into the leaves, but only managed to end up with a cod of moss to the face. Hey! You're not children, don't throw dirt! Stupid fairies. She just ignore them. Keep your focus. They're trying to rile us up, break our concentration. Don't let them. She's right. Just keep going. Easier said than done. I wasn't sure how far we walked, but it was a surprise when the path closed off again and the shadows reappeared, knitting together a tight pitch black wall that stopped us from moving on. <gasps> it's Drayson's doppelganger, except there's actually a horn this time. God, your chest, Jesus, cover that up, please. There was a mirthless laugh, and another fairy stepped out of the wall. I recognized this one instantly. It was a poor mimic of Drayson, evil fairy Drayson. Every ounce of sweetness and innocence was gone, replaced by a creepy glare. It was so disconcerting, disconcer and I hated the weights it was smirking at us, as if it could sense my discomfort. I mean, I am very uncomfortable with your chest all out like this, and I am way over time, so I gotta save the game. <laughs> so it looks like we're seeing everyone stop looking here, which is pretty cool, because uh, it's it's another version of them, and I didn't expect that. I'm really glad I saved Vuin for last, because I feel like this is the best way to end off the series, because we actually learn about Faye in its own, and we're seeing everything that I didn't get to see in other routes, which is amazing. So thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.